Greetings to the internet. Uh, if you clicked on this link, you might be wondering if there is any hope for people that have um, any type of mental disorder or depression or bipolar. Um, so I wanted to make a video because I've been talking to a lot of people, sharing my experiences and actually how I figured out what was causing my mood imbalances and um, my depression, my anxiety, and bipolar. So right off the bat, I want you to know that there is hope and that you're not, you're not sick or you're not crazy rather. Um, your body is sick. Um, your organ systems are sick. So what I found was that um, bipolar specifically is so hard to figure out because in my opinion, it's a combination of three things happening in the body simultaneously. Um, the first one is adrenal dysfunction, a low hormone being produced from your adrenal glands. Uh, the second would be um, like a per permeable gut. So your um, gut is inflamed and you can't um, digest food correctly. And then the third is um, immune system problems from hidden food allergies, cerebral allergies. Um, and the reason I mention those three things is because um, I'll just explain briefly what those are and then you'll kind of get the picture of why I made that determination. So to give you my story, um, I grew up pretty normal, um, kind of hyperactive because of all the sugar I ate and my mind was always racing. Didn't really have anxiety until about ninth grade or so, and that's when I started to have panic attacks. Um, anytime I was under a lot of stress, I would um, have a panic attack, and you know my breathing would change. I would feel like I was going to die. I would have dread and misery and fear come over me, and I couldn't function normally. And then when the stressor was removed, then I was fine. But um, as you can imagine, in the school system with tests every week and and trying to balance everything, it was really hard not to have anxiety and fear. I basically hated school because um, with the tests and the quizzes, I was just always in this heightened state of anxiety and fear. So my family history, they all had uh, mental dis disorders or uh, mood disorders, depression, anxiety, so I just figured I'll probably have that. I'll inherit it because as they say, it's genetic or it can be genetic, which um. I don't, I actually don't believe that, but um, I think it, it has to do with the patterns of the people in your life and their physical problems and the choices they make with their health and their eating, and that's what is passed down. So um, fast forward to like senior year, um, I started to get really, really depressed. Um, no motivation, uh, extreme fatigue in my body. A lot of negative, ruminating thoughts, just constantly obsessing about death. And I was, you know, a religious person, or I had faith, rather, in God. And I wasn't supposed to be the type of person that had depression, you know. That's one of the things I didn't understand. Is I have this faith in God, yet I'm experiencing this horrible, crippling depression. I'm like, that doesn't make sense to me. I Shouldn't I be, like, really happy? Um... So it got really, really bad to the point where I wasn't, I wasn't able to sleep at night and I was starting to hallucinate. And I was, you know, fantasizing about dying because um, my normal reality was so terrible. I was miserable constantly. I had no energy. No matter what I did, if I slept a lot, I didn't have any more energy. If I worked, I didn't have energy. Exercise, if I tried to eat right, no energy. So after months and years of being so fatigued and so yeah, just so tired. I was like, and then on top of it, having those tormenting, excessive ideas and thoughts constantly where you go to bed at night and your mind just races for two hours, you can't even fall asleep, you wake up exhausted the next day. You get to the point where you're like, if this is my normal life, it is not worth living because I can't physically do anything. I can't enjoy anything. So um, I check myself into a psych ward. I check myself in. Because I'm like, I need to figure out what's going on with my brain. <laughs> you know, something is not right. Um, it was really sad and it was really scary because I was, it was pretty humbling. It was after my graduation from high school. So um, 
while everyone else was going off to college, I was in a psych ward trying to get mentally stable. <laughs> and I was a good kid. I never did drugs. I never did anything bad, really. I was, I was that church kid. Um, there was no reason why I would be experiencing these symptoms. So um, I go to the psych ward. I get checked out. Um, they get, put me on an, an antipsychotic. They put me on um, either, I think it was lithium, the first one, and then they put me on Lamictal because it's a little bit safer for your blood. But um, I, I experienced immediate relief from that. So I was like really happy. Um, the sedative really calmed down the excessive racing of my mind and that kind of stuff. So I was very grateful. Um, so I was just grateful that I was able to be somewhat stable. Um, and then uh, shortly after that, I was uh, released. And then I was living, you know, taking medication, taking pills to fall asleep at night, taking antipsychotics, taking antidepressants. Um, and I eventually enrolled in school. I went to college for three years, um, studied psychology because I figured I might as well try to understand the brain more and mood disorders and help as many people as I can as I wanted to understand what I was even going through. Um, so there was like a three to five year period where I was in school, then I left school, then I tried different schools. I kept going back to school because I thought that um, I wouldn't be successful unless I went to school, but ultimately I wanted to do something in entertainment. I never really aspired to get a degree. That wasn't really something that made me feel like I had accomplished anything. Um, so the school system, the school system to me wasn't really that great. Um, Besides maybe getting a degree in some type of music or performing so performing arts, I thought that would be really cool. Um, so I, I was stable to a degree, but basically being on the medications, I would only be stable um, for about six months, eight months. So every year, I would get to the point where I would just get worse and worse mentally, um, and, and depression would come back. I didn't really experience a lot of mania. I experienced times of euphoria when I would have like a surge of energy, and but it was very seldom. It was maybe one day a week where I actually had a lot of energy and had a really good um, outlook on life, and then I would just go back into depression. But the medications kept me numb. They kind of kept me like this, but they couldn't keep the depression from coming. The, the depression always came, and um, so I had a few times within that period where I was, you know, I had contemplated suicide again, and I'm like, I can't go back to this. This is horrible. You know, I, I this isn't working. These medications aren't working. I tried different types. I was having sleeping problems. I couldn't sleep without a pill. That was my life for, for almost six years. I couldn't fall asleep without a heavy sedative. Um, and then that, as you can imagine, that would carry over into the next day, and I couldn't wake up or in the morning. I was so sleepy, tired all the time. So, um, Basically, what happened was I decided to lose some weight about five years into my whole mental illness stuff. I'm like, whatever, I got to lose weight. I got to get lean because I want to, you know, I want to look good. And I went on a specific diet where I only ate vegetables and meat. And I cut out um, dairy and grains and um, like baked goods, things like that. And I also started fasting. So I, I found out about intermittent fasting and I started doing that every day in the morning. I would skip breakfast and not eat till lunch. And everyone was like, you're not going to eat breakfast? It's the most important meal of the day. Well, every time I ate breakfast, I always felt really tired afterwards and I would be sleepy the rest of the morning. So to me, I actually had more energy and I was more awake if I didn't eat breakfast. So um, I went on this diet and I was on it for about a year, year and a half, and I lost 20 pounds and I was, I got really lean, I got the leanest I've ever been. But what was interesting is my mental problems went away when I was on this diet. And I kind of assumed that it was because of the fasting. I didn't understand what was going on. I was also taking a lot of caffeine, which is common if you have energy or fatigue problems because it gives you that, that pickup. You know, and I'll explain that later. But um, I was abusing caffeine. I was taking a large amount. And um, I didn't know it, but fasting also is very stimulating on your body. So I was taking caffeine and fasting, and then I was on a low-calorie diet too. So I was doing a lot of stupid things wrong. But I was also doing things right. My At least my anxieties 
at least my anxiety and depression had gone away and I wasn't experiencing mood swings. I was actually euphoric most of the time. So I was on that and I went, got in a relationship or I was, you know, trying to date this, this girl. I like this girl and we were hanging out and then that relationship ended and I was pretty upset about it. And I was like, whatever, I tried so hard to, to get lean and then it didn't work out. And so I went back to all the foods I'd been eating before the cupcakes and the grains and the granolas and the wheat and all that. And within three months, I was suicidal again. So I was like, this is incredible. Like, there is a direct link between this food I'm eating and how I feel. And I went on an antidepressant, yada, yada. My mom was really scared. She was really frightened for me because she had struggled with depression her whole life and anxieties, and she didn't know the cause. So I got really, I lost my job or I quit my job because I had to, you know, I had to figure out how to be stable. That's the life of someone with a mood disorder. You're always starting over, always starting new jobs because you get sick and you have to heal. Um, you have to change your meds. <laughs> so um, I'm basically at home, living at home, trying to get stable again. They put me on a medication. I'm trying to heal. Um, and I just go to the internet, man. I go to the internet and I start researching the crap out of what could this possibly be? Because um, I had faith in God. That was one of the reasons I kept going because every time I'd become suicidal or be tempted to kill myself, um, I would believe and trust that there was a bigger picture and that God was going to get me through no matter what and that part of life is suffering. doesn't mean he hates me, but it means that some you have to suffer in some way. Everybody suffers, but it's about how you handle your suffering. Um, so I just accepted that my form of suffering was I had a mood disorder. But I also believed that I could be healed. And because of my faith in God, I, I started praying a lot about it. But I started asking God. I remember the one night I was living at my sister's house. I had moved out of my parents' house. I said, forget it. I've got to figure this out. I was really scared. I wasn't on medication. I'm like, I need to figure this out. Because if I live at home, I'm going to be on medication. I have to be to be stable. I can't live there. So I was like, I'm leaving. So my sister took me in, and while I was there, I started researching um, possible causes of mood disorders. And this was after I prayed. The night before, I was like, God, um, show me if it's something that I'm doing to cause this. Because I had gone the spiritual route and prayed and did all that kind of stuff to try to, to be healed, and it didn't work. And, you know, that's pretty discouraging when it doesn't happen. Because I've seen people heal of things. So I prayed to God that he would show me, if is this something I'm doing? Am I causing this? The next day, I meet this guy, or a few days later, I meet this guy. It's a chiropractic kinesiologist. He does chiropractic, chiropractic work, too. Um, and he told me about uh, an amino acid called 5-hydroxytryptophan. And the reason he told me about it was because I had come off Effexor, the antidepressant Effexor, and I was having horrible withdrawal symptoms. I was having brain zaps and just terrible, just physical things from these withdrawal. And by the way, I would not, I would not recommend Effexor for anybody to take ever. When you understand how SSRIs work, you understand that you don't need to block up your receptors so that there's more serotonin. You need to increase your serotonin. Um, and not to jump too far ahead, but do you know where serotonin is made? 90% of it is in your gut. You can Wikipedia that right now. It's made in your gut. Serotonin is manufactured in your gut and in your intestines. And it's made after breaking down proteins and amino acids. So if you don't have enough serotonin, there's a problem with your stomach, not with your brain. Your brain can't get what it needs. Um, so I start taking this 5-HTP stuff and my symptoms go away from the... Um, from the effects of withdrawal, it increased my serotonin naturally, and I was able to sleep at night taking a combination of 5-HTP and um, niacin, which is a very calming um, B vitamin, um, helps you sleep. So I was having success with these amino acids, but I was still having a lot of fatigue, a lot of problems. Um, and I started, after three months, I started working a construction job with 